Over the weekend, Star Citizen conducted one of the most important tech tests ever. Massive scale server meshing. The magic technology that was showcased last year at CitizenCon in a small three-room environment has been deployed and tested in the entire Star Citizen solar system. And while this first test wasn't exactly a polished experience, it did actually work, proving that those crazy devs over at CIG have done what seems to be the impossible. All right, so what was actually tested? On Friday, CIG released a new test patch without NDA restrictions so people could stream and record their results of the server mesh test. And while the testing was available to many, CIG also had the test limited so that getting into the test servers was actually quite difficult. That said, once you're in the server, it should have more or less looked like the same old Stanton system that we've been playing for years, except this time broken up into multiple servers to distribute the computation load in a mostly seamless experience. The server boundaries appeared to be located in spheres around the planets. Jumping to a planet would cause you to cross this boundary and transition from one server to another, which you could tell if you were displaying the info in the upper right hand corner of the screen, it would tell you your server ID and you could watch that little number switch. Now there are some known issues with server meshing that CIG warned about before the test began in that you could be dropped out of quantum when transitioning servers and that missions could be lost as well. But as for transferring you, your ship, and anyone with you across the server mesh line, it all seemed to work pretty well. Small hiccups during the transitions were really the only things that might give it away that you were even moving from one server to another, so if you weren't actually looking for the server mesh, you might have just interpreted some of it as render stutter as you crossed the boundary. CIG also massively increased the player population to numbers never before seen. But before we get into those details, first I have a quick word from today's sponsor. I spend so much time in video games healing my player character from physical injuries, but sometimes we forget that mental healing is also very important to our well-being. It's a lesson that I wish I had learned sooner, but thanks to today's sponsor BetterHelp, it's now easier than ever to get the mental care that we need. And I know because I've used their service, juggling life, family, work, marriage, it's not easy. It doesn't really matter who you are, there's always going to be some hard times. And speaking with a therapist at BetterHelp taught me how to be a better communicator in my personal life and how to more healthily interpret the actions of people around me. And what really counts a lot for me is that BetterHelp makes therapy a breeze. You can set up a phone call, video chat, or even just messaging if that's what you prefer. Simply fill out a questionnaire on their website and BetterHelp can match you with a therapist in as little as a few days. And if that therapist isn't the right fit for you, it's super easy to switch with no hassle. Plus, if you use my link in the description, betterhelp.com slash levelcapgaming, you get 10% off your first month. So if you need a little help in life, and I think we all do, consider using online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in the video description, and thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. All right, back to these massive player numbers. The server meshing test began with 200 players in the Stanton system and was then increased to 400 players and then later 800 players in a single solar system. Now, from what I hear, the 800 player servers were more or less unplayable. 400 seemed to be okay-ish with 200 being more or less just another day in the verse. You know, with all the PTO bugs added on top of that, of course. And again, I wouldn't worry too much about 800 not performing well. I think a lot of that has to do with how much of it was clumped in lesser servers, where in the future dynamic server meshing should hopefully distribute the load a little bit more evenly. Now, I'd argue that this recent server meshing test is the most important first step towards realizing the crazy dream of Star Citizen to have massive servers where thousands and thousands of players can explore wherever they like and group up as they see fit. I think this test is even more important than the Stanton to Pyro server test that was recently conducted, as many players who are unaware of the back background server meshing tech would just assume that a wormhole is a clever transition between two servers. But with this new test and server meshing existing as invisible transitionary boundaries in the same system and allowing you to do things like fire bullets and missiles between the servers, it really is showcasing what the tech can do. 
Now there are some rough edges to the technology, quite literally if you think of it as a server edge. The actual edge location of these servers was of course being studied much more minutely during the test by the player base, and while flying across it quickly provided a relatively normal looking experience, save HUD markers flickering or missions being dropped, it otherwise looked pretty seamless. However, some interesting anomalies seem to occur when the planets may have orbital physics in their servers and the space server doesn't have those same rotating physics. YouTuber and streamer Ollie 43 transitioned from his server to the planet and his ship on the other server behind him just disappeared in space. This might be due to the planet server rotating, so as he crossed over he just sort of began orbiting around and his spaceship quickly disappeared, or it could be some other sort of server meshing bug. Needless to say, it's not a flawless experience and requires a lot of refinement and sort of interesting edge case solutions, or maybe there will always just be weird edge case scenarios. All that said, CIG seems to be aware of the transition bugs or issues, and it makes sense that while transferring your player and ship across a boundary, things like the UI and missions might not move yet because they're just not coded in properly. So once they are, those transitions should look even more seamless. Which is really important considering the long-term goal is dynamic server meshing. So rather than having, say, just planets and space be the different servers in each system, instead heavily populated areas would be broken up into their own servers. For example, a spaceship with 100 players on it could be its own server while the space around it might be on another server. And frankly, I'm glad I have nothing to do with the programming in charge of that logic because, oh my god, it sounds beyond complex and insanely cool at the same time. Frankly, there isn't another MMO out there that shouldn't like to have this kind of tech available to them, and CIG could be in a very good position to sell off some of this code to companies like Epic or Unity at some point to bolster the capabilities of their engines. But that's really a conversation for another day. First, they have to refine the tech in their own game. Now, in other less grandiose scale news, CIG teased an image of an upcoming ship called the Raptor. Now, we don't really know much about the ship, but based on the name and timing, I would guess that it's a smallish to medium sized ship, combat oriented, and it's likely gonna launch sometime during Invictus launch week, which tends to happen towards the end of May. So the timing is definitely lined up with hyping this ship for an upcoming ship sale. And speaking of space combat, players can currently partake in the Overdrive Initiative event, which when completed will award you with an upgrade token for the Hornet Mark II to turn it into the military version of the ship. The catch being that you, well, need to buy the civilian Hornet Mark II, which just released for around $175. Kind of a lot for a medium fighter in my opinion. And generally speaking, people are a bit irked by the event, considering it's very much geared toward FOMOing people into buying an expensive combat ship to upgrade it to another ship for a limited period of time. And the event itself appears to be relatively tame with some super basic mission events, so it's a stretch to call it new content. And overall, I tend to agree. If you're gonna let players earn something in game, then that should more or less be a free event. And if you're gonna let players buy a ship, then that should be its own event. Combining the two kind of rubs me the wrong way. And also the Hornet line of ships has become beyond convoluted at this point. I've got a Hornet Wildfire and I can't side grade it to a Hornet Mark II because of the same price. So I have to stick with my old version of the Hornet and I don't really see the incentive in doing the event. It's all just kind of a big jumble and I, I think CIG hasn't planned this one out particularly well. Now beyond that, CIG continues to showcase the upcoming features that will launch with patch 3.23 and frankly, they all look amazing. I already spoke at length about the persistent hangers in my video last week, but they also showed off their character customizer before that, which could easily be argued as one of the most powerful character customizers for just about any game out there. And considering that the team behind just making hair for the game is bigger than most indie dev teams, it should be pretty impressive. 
Plus, it's coming with the ability to save your character profiles between patches so that players will be able to spend hours curating the look without having to worry about that getting wiped in the next patch. This is really a huge deal for the game and we should hopefully start to see a lot of unique looking people in the next patch. Now, what does this mean for the average player? Well, at the moment, not a whole lot. Not until patch 3.23 drops. And we still don't really have a release date for that other than it's aimed for quarter two. So sometime over the next two-ish months. But the buildup of content for that patch is becoming simply massive. And the fact that CIG is conducting mass scale testing for server meshing now gives me hope that they may actually get us a 4.0 patch before the end of the year, in part because of all the years of promising 4.0 by the end of the year and then failing to deliver on that timeline. This is the first time that CIG has actually started testing it publicly. Fingers crossed that it goes well and they remain on schedule. What do you guys think about these mass scale server meshing tests? It feels almost unreal that we're finally testing this long promised tech. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe for more content like it, ding that notification bell to beat the YouTube algorithm with me, and up next check out my deep dive into the persistent hanger tech. This is one of my most anticipated upcoming features. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.